If you create digital documents that require approvals and e-signatures, you may be familiar with paid services like DocuSign. However, there is an open source platform that works just as well, and in this video, I'll introduce you to DocuSeal. DocuSeal allows you to upload PDF forms and use its form builder to add fields to the PDF, which can then be sent to your contacts to securely complete. It is intuitive to use and can be set up in just a few minutes. DocuSeal can be set up either as a cloud service or on-premise, and both have paid versions if you require additional features. In this video, I'll go over setting up the free version of DocuSeal on-premise on a Synology NAS using Container Manager. To learn more about DocuSeal, check out the links in the description below. Let's get to the setup. The first thing to do is make sure Container Manager is installed, which is the case on my Synology NAS. Once Container Manager is installed, bring up FileStation and create a DocuSeal folder under the Docker shared folder. Then within the DocuSeal folder, create a PG underscore data folder that will be used by the Postgres database that will also be running. Next, bring up Container Manager, select Project, and click Create. From this general settings window, give the project the name. Set the path to the DocuSeal folder that was just created. For source, select create docker compose.yaml from the drop down menu and paste in the YAML for this project, which you'll find in the description below. For the most part, this YAML config will just work, but there are a few things you'll want to note. First is the host port number. If 3000 is already in use by your Synology NAS, make sure to change this number to one that isn't being used. Next, confirm that the volume paths for both containers are correct and adjust accordingly. Lastly, if you want to assign a unique password to your Postgres database, you'll need to change it in both the DocuSeal environment section and in the environment section of the Postgres container. Now we can finish setting up the project by clicking Next. Next again on this Web Portal Settings window. Then click Done on this Summary window. This will start downloading the images and build the project. If all goes well, DocuSeal will start up successfully and you'll get a confirmation with an exit code of zero. You can also confirm that DocuSeal is running by selecting the DocuSeal container, click on Log, and check on this specific entry, which indicates that the container is running. At this point, you can bring up another browser tab, enter in the IP address of your Synology NAS, along with the host port assigned to DocuSeal, which should be 3000 if you didn't change it earlier, and hit enter to bring up the DocuSeal initial setup window. From here, enter in the information that is requested and click Submit. You can skip the developer's newsletter, and now you should be logged in to DocuSeal. Currently, DocuSeal is only accessible internally. To make it functional, it needs to be exposed to the internet. You can do this by first setting up a DDNS hostname using Synology as the provider, then create a wildcard Let's Encrypt certificate. Once that is in place, you'll want to create a reverse proxy using a subdomain from the DDNS hostname that was just created. Then assign the subdomain to use the wildcard Let's Encrypt certificate. I'm moving quickly through this step because I have a video covering this procedure which you can refer to for step-by-step -step details. You'll find the link in the description below. The last step is to set up port forwarding on your router to forward port 443 to your Synology NAS. Once all of these steps are done, you'll be able to bring up DocuSeal using HTTPS and the subdomain you just configured and log in. Now let's finish setting up DocuSeal. The first thing you should do is update the app URL by going to Settings, then Account. Here, enter in the reverse proxy subdomain that you set up. This is important to get right because this app URL will be used when DocuSeal generates links. Next, you want to configure email and set up an SMTP server. 
Here, I'm using my Gmail email address set up with an app password. You can set this up as well, and I'll leave a link on how to do this in the description of this video. Now, with everything set up, I'll bring up the DocuSeal homepage, upload a new document, a sample contract I put together, and demonstrate how DocuSeal can be used. For this document, I've set it up so that two individuals will need to fill out the form. The first person is the consultant, so I'll rename first party to consultant. Then I'll add a signature field, a text field for the person's name, and a date field that this individual needs to fill out. You can also give each of these fields a better description if you would like, and adjust if the field is required. To add the second person, who will be the client in this example, click on the plus sign next to consultant and add a second party. Again, I'll rename this entry to client and add a signature, text, and data field as well. I'll also give each field a better description. Once that is all set, I'll click Save, and now I'm ready to send this form to recipients. To do this, I'll click on the Send to Recipients option, which brings up this window where we can send this form to recipients via email. Here, I'll enter in an email address for both the consultant and client. There are also options to edit the message if you would like and preserve order if the form needs to be completed by the first party before sending to the second party. For this example, I won't change the text and I'll uncheck the preserve order box to send the form to the consultant and client at the same time. Now I'll click add recipients, which sends the email to the recipients and takes us to this submissions window where we can see that the emails were sent out successfully. Now I'll bring up the email that was sent as the consultant, click on the provided link, fill out the required fields, and click Submit. If I then switch back to the DocuSeal submissions view and refresh the page, we can see confirmation that the form was completed by one of the recipients. I'll fill out the form as the client as well. Then when I refresh the DocuSeal submissions page, we can see the form is completed and we can view the completed form and download it to our computer as well. DocuSeal has many other options that you might want to investigate, which may or may not require upgrading to the Pro version. I've really just touched on some of its capabilities. Let me know if you plan to use DocuSeal in the comment section below and consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel if you like this type of content. Also, if you would like to support my work or hire me to help you set up DocuSeal, check out the links here on screen or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.